Right now at 530, we're tracking a bizarre crime alert in Lexington this morning. Police say a woman was assaulted when a man she met on a dating website broke into her home. We'll tell you how she fought back. A Danville man accused of animal cruelty is said to appear in a Lexington court on a different set of charges. And a Montgomery County mother is charged with wanton endangerment after police say her young son tested positive for cocaine. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome into you. I'm Rebecca Smith. Thanks so much for being here on this Friday. Let's check out what's happening in the weather department right now. Let's get a look with Micah. Well, it looks pretty good outside right now. We're in the 50s and 60s. Great start to your day. It's very dry outside. And that's the good news because when it's really, really dry in terms of just the moisture content in the air, then it's really hard to actually pull out some of that rain. And I just don't see it anytime soon. Let's talk about your Friday and get off into it. And we hit the afternoon sitting right there in the mid 80s again. A lot of sunny skies, too. I honestly don't see that changing anytime soon. And that'll take you through your weekend as well. We'll talk more about that when you can expect rain next coming up in a few minutes. Well, we are tracking a rather strange crime alert in Lexington. Police tell us a woman managed to fight off a man who broke into her home. It happened around 3.30 this morning in a home on Sutherland Drive off Highway 60. Mark Barber is live in Lexington with the latest details. Mark, well, tell us more about this relationship between the two. Good morning, Rebecca. Well, police say that this really is an unusual case. They say a man meets a woman on a dating website, doesn't see her for two to three months, and then shows up with a gun at her house and attacks her. Now, investigators say that this unusual case all played out around 3 a.m. this morning here on Sutherland Drive. That's when they say the man showed up at the woman's door. Officers tell us the man was armed with a gun and he forced his way inside her house. According to police, the woman fought back when he started pushing her around. We're told one of his hands was injured, so he was wearing a brace. So the woman was able to grab the gun away from him and tossed it out a window. She locked him out and called police when he ran outside for the gun. Now, the woman was hit in the head during the attack, but police say fortunately she was not seriously hurt. Investigators tell us when they got here, they found the attacker in a neighboring home. They say he knew the person who lived there and was trying to hide from them. Now, the man has been arrested, but we do not know his name yet. He isn't telling investigators who he is, and the woman doesn't know his name either because she says she hasn't seen him since May. Now, officers are hoping to figure out who he is when they run his fingerprints at the jail. The man is facing several charges, including possession of a stolen gun and first-degree burglary. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, it's a disturbing story out of Lexington this morning. A man was arrested after police say he raped a 14-year-old girl. 43-year-old William Owings was arrested yesterday. He's charged with two counts of third-degree rape and unlawful electronic communication with a minor. Officers say they recovered a disturbing text messages that Owings sent to the girl. They also say he raped her about eight times. He's scheduled to be arraigned later today. We're tracking a disturbing case this morning out of Montgomery County. A mother is in jail after her young son tested positive for cocaine. 32-year-old Stephanie Walker faces a wanton endangerment charge. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office says that social services alerted them about the 8-year-old. They told police they found cocaine in the boy's system, which led to police arresting Walker at her home. A neighbor says she often saw the boy, but not his parents. He seemed hyper, but he was a sweet kid. He was a good kid. He come out and played by himself. Uh, I've only seen her, seen them come out and get in their automobile. They don't deserve him if they ain't going to raise him right. Well, deputies say the little boy is now in the custody of a relative. Happening today, a Boyle County man accused of animal cruelty is set to appear in a Fayette County court this morning on drug trafficking charges. Police say Christopher Pope's dogs attacked a woman earlier this week. Today, he'll appear in court on charges stemming from a case from last year. WKMT's Michelle Chamberlain on our live desk to explain. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Pope will be in court today on charges of trafficking in a controlled substance and being a persistent felony offender. The hearing is in Lexington, stemming from a 2014 case. Pope's seven dogs attacked Loretta Stevens earlier this week in Lincoln County. He was keeping the dogs behind a nearby home that was unoccupied. Pope is charged with harboring a vicious animal and animal cruelty. Loretta told us she is thankful for the people that have been taking care of her since the attacks on Monday. Her lawyers are advising that she not speak about the attack itself. But she did tell us that she has several surgeries planned, including skin grafts, and that she is in obvious pain. I hurt real bad. 
I hurt real bad. <laughs> I need to go in and lay down. I hurt real bad. My mom's taking care of me. Now, six of the dogs in the attack are now at the Lincoln County Animal Shelter. The seventh was shot and killed. Live at the news desk, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Oh, Jessamine County Grand Jury has now indicted a man for a shooting that injured someone. According to the Jessamine Journal, Carlos Taylor was indicted on a first degree assault charge. He had been charged with attempted murder. Two weeks ago, Nicholasville police say Taylor shot Calvin Livers near the corner of East Chestnut and Jefferson Streets. An Anderson County man accused of tattooing a vulgar word on his girlfriend has pleaded guilty to related charges. 30-year-old Michael Joseph pleaded guilty to assault, terroristic threatening, and then entered an offer plea on a charge of wanton endangerment. A judge ordered Joseph to pay $1,000 to have the tattoo removed. All this according to the Anderson News. Police say Joseph and the victim got into an argument which escalated and ended with Joseph tattooing the woman at gunpoint. A University of Cincinnati police officer has now pleaded not guilty to murder and posted bond. Officer Ray Tenzing was charged with murder after authorities reviewed body camera images showing him shooting Samuel DeBose during a routine traffic stop. Two other officers who responded to the scene after the shooting were put on administrative leave. Part of an airplane wing that washed up on a beach off Africa's east coast is being sent to France for further investigation. The analysis marks the beginning of a forensic examination that could ultimately determine whether the part came from that missing Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. Hannah Daniels has the latest. The six-foot-long flapperon that washed up on Reunion Island is expected to reach France tonight. Airplane experts there will be taking a closer look at barnacles covering it to see if they match something submerged for over a year. They'll also be looking at any other markings on the debris. They'll be looking at the deformation of any of the metal. They'll look to see if it's been torn. So far, investigators are confident the piece did indeed come from a Boeing 777 jet. They're less certain, however, that a shredded suitcase found near the debris has anything to do with the flight. The bag doesn't seem to show the signs of having been in the water for a long period of time. If the part is determined to be from Flight 370, the piece would provide the first real clue into what happened to the plane. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. Well, Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 is the only 777 plane missing in the world right now. Australian authorities who have led the search, ocean currents, could have carried the wreckage thousands of miles away toward Reunion Island and that the discovery would likely not change the current search area in the southern Indian Ocean. Well, state police hope newly released surveillance pictures will help them find some burglars. Police say two men broke into a warehouse on Liberty Church Road in Corbin Tuesday afternoon. They say the men stole some new refrigerator unit condensers. Police say one of the burglars used an ATV to drive off with them. Police also think one of the burglars was driving an SUV, which was found nearby. Well, police have arrested a man they say led them on a chase that injured a state trooper. Police say Basil Gilpin was arrested yesterday in Tennessee. On Sunday, they say he tried to hit state troopers with his truck at a Bell County safety checkpoint. Police chased him, and after his truck became stuck, police say Gilpin ran off. During the chase, they say the trooper Josh Messer broke his leg. Well, just days after issuing a recall on spices, Kroger is recalling bunches of the herb cilantro. Company representatives say the cilantro is linked to a cyclospora outbreak from stores in 10 states, including in Kentucky. The parasite can cause intestinal discomfort and cannot be washed off produce. The FDI says the outbreak is linked to fresh cilantro from Mexico. If you want to read more about the recall, you can visit our website at WKYT.com. Well, an important deadline is quickly approaching in the future of the Centerpoint project in downtown Lexington. In April, the city demanded developer Dudley Webb fill in the block, claiming no work was being done there. Attorneys for both sides fired off letters, but in May, they agreed to back off for 90 days to allow a development group time to look over the project. That 90-day period ends on Monday. So where do things stand? Lexington Mayor Jim Gray told us he can't speak specifically about where things stand right now until that waiting period is over. I can say that uh, I've observed the project now for almost eight years, and uh, while it's been turbulent, while it's been challenging, that I'm optimistic today that every effort is being made to push, to encourage this project going forward. 
The deadly web said he has no comment while the 90 day period of talking to financing prospects is still in place. By 40 is the time this morning. Let's get a look at live draft traffic and see what is happening out there on the roads. Not hearing of too many major issues. Taking a look at the Waze app right now. Not too, too much to uh, slow you down according to that view of the match. Just seeing a couple of stalled vehicles. One on Man of War in Lexington. Another two vehicles downtown on Cooperstown Drive. There's still a whole lot more to come this morning. Thanks for being here with us on this Friday. Yeah, we're looking outside on First Alert Defender. No rain for today, but what about your weekend? I'll have that coming up next.